Welcome to this uh, short video abstract on one of our recent papers that is on trying to track seismic sources. In seismometers, we, we measure, measure the ground motion, usually with standard seismometers, but uh, as many of you know, we've been interested in also measuring um, rotational ground motions with ring lasers and portable sensors. Now, um, often in seismology, we do have moving sources. Think of a a large rupture, a large earthquake, where that starts at some position and then basically the rupture moves in one direction, some, sometimes in, in two directions. And you would like to track uh, the energy or basically ask in the seismogram where does, does the energy come from. And that's basically the topic of this uh, paper. Normally, classically, um, estimating the, the direction of seismic energy requires a seismic array. That means we have a couple of seismic stations that are set up and then you combine the information in the different uh, locations to actually track um, where the wave fronts are coming from. Now the main point of this paper is you actually can do this with a single point measurement and that's really cool and of course it requires not only the classic three component measurements but it also requires additional three components or actually single components um, of rotational ground motions. That's the topic of this paper. Now, how does this work? Based on this fundamental concept, we actually asked a master student, Kilian Gessele, to perform some synthetic simulations to see whether at least in, a, in an ideal world this works. And uh, the graph shown here indicates in principle how this works. Um, if you bring that to two dimensions, think of a, a two-dimensional situation. So you would uh, observe, for example, the x and uh, y component of motion. And in addition to that, orthogonal to it, you would measure the rotational motion. And if you simulate earthquakes, uh, you can actually more or less uniquely determine um, the direction where the shear wave energy comes from. Let's uh, indicate it here. So that's quite an unusual because if you uh, think of classic po polarization analysis, uh, if you only have displacement or velocity recordings, you, you would be able to say, well, there is a linear polarization and that maybe is, is the first arrival, so it's a P wave, but in, you would not really know where it comes from. There is a, an ambiguity whether it comes from this direction or from the other direction. If you have rotational motions, that ambiguity is actually gone and can, you can uniquely determine the direction of motion. Now, does that move, work with a moving source? And uh, yes, it does. And that has been nicely shown by Kilian uh, with some really powerful simulations that you, you see here in, in, in the background. Like if you, um, uh, if you record at a, a variety of stations, um, with um, additional rotation motions, you can basically track where the energy comes from and it should then focus on basically where uh, the energy uh, is, is, is located and if it's moving, then you should be able to, to track it. Now, actually, we wrote this up and we submitted it to a, a journal and it was rejected. We thought it's a great idea, it's a cool idea, even though it's just theory, but they said, mm, you know, it's nice, but uh, there is no data. So then we went back and thought, uh, of course, you know, there, there are not uh, many rotational data around. Uh, rotational portable sensors are only coming on, on the market. So we went back and looked at the ring laser data and now see what happened. So here our postdoc, uh, Shi Hao Yan, comes into play. He actually looked at uh, data from the Romi ring laser, a multi-component uh, rotation sensor, the most uh, sensitive in the world at, at the present time. And he saw uh, at night in particular, he saw consistent uh, data, um, basically wave energy packets that were seen on, on the ring laser, but also on the co-located broadband station. Now you see some, some data here. So that seems like they're looking at the same signal. Actually, we initially thought this comes from a train line that's not too far away, maybe one to two kilometers. And at night, there are heavy freight trains um, 
passing by. And then he applied the, basically the, the same data analysis that uh, Keeley and Gessele derived for his, uh, developed for his, uh, uh, the synthetic data, applied them to this uh, uh, real data, and surprise, surprise, he saw a very consistent pattern. Um, either basically the, or the, the, the azimuth was changing, was obviously moving sources, and the azimuth would consistently change um, uh, either in, in one direction, basically coming from more or less um, east going north or north going, going east or um, southeast. Now, uh, if one tracks the energy back, and you can see this in the picture here, um, actually it turned out it must be uh, cars going along the, the street that's called B2, here that you see, which is uh, only a couple of hundred meters away from the uh, Vomi ring laser and the co-located broadband stations. That was one of the situations when I first saw this, I thought, I don't believe this. So um, with the help of uh, Joachim Wassermann and, and others, we quickly uh, installed a small seismic array actually to, to cross-check that with the classic array analysis, of course, FK, frequency wave number, analysis. And uh, it turns out it's consistent. The frequency wave number analysis comes back basically with the same result. We see consistent shear wave, shear wave energy uh, because we looked only at uh, vertical component rotation data that contains only SH motion. And it really uh, allows us to track the cars uh, on the road. We can determine whether they are going coming into the city or out of the city and we could also track their velocity. So, you know, we could use it uh, as a speed control um, and maybe, you know, get some fines paid or something. So, uh, that's quite interesting. So, finally, we had our real data examples and we submitted and uh, the paper then very quickly got accepted. Now, um, okay, this is seismology. We don't want to track cars. It's an interesting exercise. It's fun. But of course, uh, we would like to know more about earthquakes. So um, that would be the next step, actually, to, uh, to do that with portable um, rotation sensors that now do exist, put them in the field. And uh, of course, we need a fairly sizable earthquake to be able to, to track uh, a rupture over time. But that would be the next step. So um, in conclusion, it's, I think, the first uh, example where what we could show with real data and synthetic simulations. Six-component uh, seismology is, is, is very powerful to track the, where energy, uh, uh, seismic energy is coming from, also over time. And, of course, it remains to be seen whether we can uh, also do this in the field and, uh, and track natural sources such as um, earthquakes. Thank you for watching.